book point of care testing and management of diabetes i am not going to burden you with a lot of data and a lot of information uh, i would just begin my talk by asking three simple questions that uh, all of us are using some kind of point of care devices or testing in our clinical practice routine clinical practice if i ask you to name three most common devices i think it is very easy to guess which we are using number one we are using a glucometer Number one, we are using a BP instrument. <laughs> it is also a point of care device. And number three, we are using an ECG machine. So when we talk about non-communicable diseases, these three devices are very, very simple, which we are using very regularly in our clinical practice. And they are so integral to our clinical practice that if we don't measure BP, if we don't check blood sugar, blood sugar is almost now uh, regarded as the fifth vital sign. So our <laughs> vital recording is considered incomplete. And now there are many algorithms which are at the same time of recording blood pressure, they are also taking some ECG track also with the help of some devices maybe one lead two lead at least you can uh, diagnose atrial fibrillation with that if you are not looking at the pulse so with this context I would like to tell you that, uh, that now the technology has advanced uh, rapidly over the last decade and now there are many more things which can be added to our clinics uh, and can improve the lives of patients uh, with diabetes so uh, the workflow has changed uh, we knew that uh, first of all uh, we would like a patient you ordered some a certain test patient goes back to the lab tests are conducted then the patient comes back to you after some time maybe after interval of some day and uh, may not come uh, may not come back again at all so we may miss the opportunity to testing these uh, patients and knowing their results but now with the availability of certain point of care devices uh, you have this opportunity and you can actually bring down this uh, 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 actually reduce the frequency of these events and uh, more focused on your care point. Mm -hmm. So the I'm not going uh, in detail of these definitions, but these are definitions which are given and uh, these are the POCT which are defined by American College of Pathologists as well as the other definitions are there. But there are certain key tests which can be done now at the point of care. These include HbA1c, lipid profile, albumin creatinine ratio and we all know CRP and urine uh, analysis with the dipsticks can also be done. Just to tell you that these are the different point of care devices which can be classified on the basis of their operation, utility, sampling, result reporting, cost analysis and again you can classify them on the basis of disposable, reusable, multifunctional, clinic, field, invasive, non-invasive, visible, electronic display, low, high, qualitative, semi-quantitative, quantitative and there are multiple uh, uh, on the blue side you can see uh, the different tests which fall into this category. So what are the, let us first address the problem, what are the barriers in using point of care devices in India? One is the patient's perspective, sometimes patient may not like to do the test at the same time the patient wants, uh, is having the consultation, there may be some financial restraints, also sometimes patient may be afraid also, how many times we have seen that you ask uh, a relative, now there is a concept of opportunistic screening, if we find any of the relative who is on the OB side and there is a strong family history, then uh, it is said that it is better to screen those patients at your clinic at that point of time they may be having hypertension, they may be having diabetes. But if you tell the relative that I want to test your blood sugar even for free, he will simply say that I don't want to test my blood sugar. The simple reason being, uh, he is afraid of getting uh, diagnosed with the diabetes. If you ask somebody just, uh, we want to check your blood pressure, many of these people may be avoiding uh, the checking of the blood pressure simply because they are afraid that they don't want to be tested, uh, they don't want to <laughs> know that they are having some sort of disease. So this is again a major barrier and many a times uh, you prescribe a test and a patient may not be having an access to the lab. For example, it is particularly true for the tired two, three or sometimes rural areas where if you write an HbA1c, the patient may not be able to do it. Also, uh, as a doctor, since we have not used the, uh, these devices a lot of time, we also had our doubts. We were never sure that uh, what kind of results these devices will give, if, what will happen if the patient compares this result with the lab result, what will happen if the result does not match, how I am going to justify that the HbA1c on point of care device is this and the, from the lab is coming like this. So these are the uh, doubts which we had in our mind and there is a lot of evidence which says that it is uh, uh, now the device are as good as any other lab. Patient burdens, uh, we are busy in our clinical practice, so we just want to write and then we don't want to see uh, the patient again because it obviously takes more time of yours. When you ask the patient to do a POCD test, the patient does the POCD test and, and again comes back to you. So in one consultation, he is coming twice to your chamber, uh, one before the test and one after the test. 
so this may again add burden to your busy clinical practice so this may be one of the inertia and uh, so sometimes we may have uh, we, we may not have, uh, may not have the staff who is expert in handling these facilities for example you may you cannot do each and every work on your own for example if you want to do a uh, urine depth take or you want to do a urine acr hba1c point of care fundus examination point of care you may not be able to do it on your own so you need to build uh, have, you need to build the capacity building of your staff so most of these steps should be able uh, your staff should be able to carry out uh, and sometimes we may also have issues uh, related to the infrastructure regulatory issues and the financial management and the workforce management so these are the challenges where we find it difficult and uh, these are the major identified barriers in using point of care devices in india so key point of care devices i have already listed so what new can be added uh, we have already i have already spoken about so just look at this uh, few examples you can say that this is one of the study in which more than 42000 patients record in us were retrospectively evaluated for the adherence and they found that the compliance with recommended frequency of hba1c tested was only less than 7% at the recommended frequency for hba1c when the POCT devices were not used. So uh, you just imagine that uh, only less than 7% of the patients, they were getting their HbA1c tested in time as per the guidelines or as per the doctor's prescription and 93% of them were not getting it tested at the right time. Also, uh, the treatment frequency is important and this study reported that almost 70% of the patients who were tested and treated according to the ADA guidelines, they met HbA1c goals if their HbA1c was done at time. And only 30% were able uh, to meet the HbA1c goals if they did not meet guidelines for either testing frequency or the treatment modification. So this forms the part of the clinical inertia or the therapeutic inertia. So what are the advantages which can be observed with a POCT HbA1c versus lab for the management of the diabetes and comorbidity? So increased compliance with the testing frequency can be there. Better glycemic control studies have shown that. There can be operational and economic efficiency. Uh, uh, we say that operational e and economic efficiency because in one consultation everything is being done. The patient need not to travel back to home, need not to order the lab test, need not to collect the reports again. And again, uh, he need not to come back to your clinic just to discuss the report. So all these things can be uh, addressed at single visit if you have this kind of point of care device in our clinical practice. Also better care for underprivileged populations uh, because these devices can be moved to the area where you want. They just need a electricity connection and they can be, they doesn't require very uh, tight temperature controls and other regulations. So simply can be used at multiple settings and multiple point of time. So this is what uh, we discussed in this slide. Also, uh, it has been uh, already discussed the increased compliance with testing frequency and there is a reduction in HbA1c. And there is also uh, the doctors who tend to see HbA1c more regularly, they are li more likely to address the thera therapeutic issues also. Let me pu uh, put one of the simplest examination. For example, a patient comes to you and patient tells you that, uh, I, uh, as most of our patients will do, I am having a good control of blood sugar. You will ask, how many times did you test? The patient, say, uh, patient will say, I tested only one or twice. You will ask the patient to test the random blood glucose level at that point of time. And suppose the random blood glucose comes out to be better. You say it is 150 or 160. So you miss the opportunity if the HbA1c is not done at that point of time and you don't see the HbA1c. Most of us, what we will do, we will simply repeat the prescription, assuming that the patient is saying right and patient is having good control. But this is also, I think uh, all of you will agree that uh, in most of the cases, if you do an HbA1c, you will always find that there is some discrepancy and most of the patients, they may not be having that tight control as seen in the uh, their fast, uh, their current uh, report. So this kind of uh, issues can be addressed immediately uh, if we are using a device uh, which is giving us the report immediately and you can actually modify the treatment and this is also true for hypoglycemia. Patient may also be having hypoglycemia and we may miss hypoglycemias also because if the HbA1c turns out to be 6, sometimes even 5.8, then we know that if somebody is on OHA like sulfonylureas or somebody on insulin, then uh, there is greater possibility that these patients may also be experiencing some episodes of hypoglycemia which we are likely to miss. So uh, this is uh, a slide which shows that uh, the clinics or the settings where the POCT was used in comparison to the central lab, the HbA1c was uh, relatively better when compared to the lab simply because the treatment intensification could be done in time. Also, this is the workflow just to show that the point of care reduces steps and inefficiencies. And uh, we, uh, uh, we all know that what are the steps which are usually there and what can be done in POC uh, uh, setting. 
So uh, the impact on workflow has been assessed at multiple settings and it is uh, seen that the visit uh, schedule can drop down by 80% revisiting of the patient if uh, cer certain tests can be done at the point of time. Venous blood uh, collections can also go down by 75% and the therapy discussion at the first appointment multiplies by a factor of 5.3 and this has been seen in the study by the Petzer et al. in 2018. And uh, this is the impact on the workflow uh, reported by the Pezzer et al. And they found that the based on 40 hour work we calculated for 1000 patients, average time saving was 15 days. So over a period of time, this is the time which somebody actually saves. Uh, how does it uh, changes the workflow with POCT like HbA1c now lipid profile we know that uh, we can also do non fasting lipid profile in our patients every time the fasting is not required other than until you find that the triglyceride levels are very very high more than 500 with POCT 89% fewer follow up phone calls were required 85% fewer uh, follow up letters the letters we don't give in our clinical practice but this is the practice in the most of the uh, foreign countries where uh, the patients they actually get emails or the letters from the uh, consult uh, consult and they are consulting and uh, revisits actually came down by 61%. So the cost saving from the improved efficiency was to the tune of almost $25 uh, per patient. So uh, this is again the same kind of setting. I am not going to go into details of that. And uh, again, this shows that uh, the impact on the workflow can save uh, some money also and can be actually beneficial for the patient. So uh, now look at the impact on the satisfaction. So what is the impact on the satisfaction? This is the response of 298 patients that has been recorded. And uh, it says that uh, one of the questions that was asked that how did you experience the finger stick blood, uh, blood uh, collection in comparison to a venous blood uh, collection? And 62.1% per, uh, of the patients said that they are happy that the, their HbA1c has been tested without a venipuncture. When asked which one would you prefer, again going back to the finger stick or the uh, venous blood collection, 49.4% uh, they said that uh, they will pre uh, prefer a finger stick uh, blood collection, while to some it did not matter. Also, so HbA1c value is being tested directly in your physician's office. So do you see an advantage in this approach? So 82.6% of the patient, they said uh, that uh, yes, this is an advantage. I would just like to share my personal experience with you. I was also uh, like any one of you or any one of us who is not using a point of care devices. I was also skeptical and I was delaying the adoption of a POCT device in my clinic. So this is what this was a routine that I was ordering the HbA1c test. The patient was coming back last year in the month of September or October. I got the my POCT device. So after that, what I observed is that the HbA1c actually most of the patients, 90% of my patients, they will agree to do a point of care HbA1c at that point of time only. Even the course doesn't matter to them, even the because the time is also very less. And when you tell them that they need not to come again, this is totally personal experience which I am sharing with you. So this is what I experienced in the, uh, in the clinical practice. So impact on satisfaction, again reported by the Lawrence et al. So collection process, confidence in the process, the confidence in the results, convenience, cost, disease management. So there are multiple factors which are there. And uh, most of them, they have been uh, given a hands up by the... Uh, patients in the, when it comes to the patient satisfaction surveys. So I will just uh, skip these slides uh, for the lack of time. So uh, because we have already covered that point. So what are the advantages in the critical aspects of the point K testing? So HbA1c we know is the biomarker and the gold standard method right now for the diagnosis of the diabetes. Tomorrow may, we may have something new. And international guidelines uh, recommend keeping a track of HbA1c at least every three months in patients that are off target and or after a therapeutic change and two annual measurements to be conducted in at least all the patients. In addition, most of the international guidelines, they have included HbA1c measurement among the methods for the diagnosis also. And therefore using the POC HbA1c testing can be relied on to monitor for pre-diabetes, type 1 or type 2 diabetes effectively. What are the clinical advantages for diabetes management? Improved turnaround time, it takes only less than 5 minutes. So it shortens the pre-analytical, analytical and the post-analytical steps. There is a reduced therapeutic turnaround time. Rapid results will fa felicitate the patient man uh, with uh, ma uh, management. Improved monitoring of certain conditions which require uh, where frequent testing is desirable. Improved convenience, also smaller sample volumes, just a finger pick. And ability to provide laboratory tests in remote locations or outside laboratory hours. And the POCT may offer economic benefits in terms of reduced clinical visits and length of hospital stay and the hospital admission.
This is a very, very good paper, and I think you should all uh, read this paper because this is the recommendation for in clinic uh, POCT for diabetes management in India. And uh, Dr. Bansi Sabu, who is the organizing chairman for this con conference, happens to be the first author for this uh, paper. So I think it is a very good read, and it gives us a lot of information about this. What is the current status and recommendation of the point of care devices in diabetes management in India? So any point of care HbA1c device should have an acceptable performance. It should be standardized to be uh, at, at least NGSP certified, simplified operations, and it should be having a good memory to store and capability to share the data also with the clinical management software. We can also test lipid parameters. We can also test for the albumin creatinine ratio and uh, urine ACR can be calculated. And uh, HbA1c sh uh, results should be reported in both NGSP and IFCC units along with EAG because these two standards, uh, because in European countries or the US, the IFCC uh, the, uh, reporting is used. So uh, what I would say is that no result is better than a wrong result. And, and in clinic, POCD should give an information error code and no result should be reported displayed when a correct result may not be uh, possible. So there are machines which are having that kind of quality embedded rather than uh, reporting any sample which they find that it is uh, the report could be wrong they will simply say that the report could uh, the test could not be run or the there is an error so so that you are warned that there is some error so you can go back to the laboratory testing when required so if such kind of feature are there then uh, it makes uh, uh, this very important. Also, I would say that uh, this is not the HbA1c urine ACR lipid profile. Now, we have uh, AI-based smartphone cameras which can be used for the detection of the diabetic retinopathy and they are very, very useful again because uh, you need not to dilate the uh, uh, pupil for these patients and even non-mediatic uh, fundus examination can be carried out and many of us may not be expert in reading these images. Uh, some of these images are very obvious and anyone who would uh, see these images will say that this patient is certainly having some diabetic retinopathy and you will refer it to some ophthalmologist. But sometimes uh, there may be very small microaneurysm or very small hemorrhage which you may miss. So AI based uh, feature allows uh, of this instrument allows you to detect the uh, diabetic retinopathy in time and uh, their, uh, the sensitivity and the specificity of AI-backed uh, algorithms are now more than 90% uh, and in some instrument it is even more than 95%. These are, this is just to show that uh, we are using point of care devices in our clinic, all kinds of point of care devices uh, we use just to see uh, what uh, we can do best for our patients. My own experience with POCT, I find it very convenient, low cost maintenance, requires very less space. You can just see that in just on just one table you can put it and nothing else is required. There is nothing uh, like spilling of blood or anything. It is the dry chemistry which is there. So easy to perform. Training is very simple. It will take only a few minutes to train your staff and the more patients they get ready for POCT as results are available immediately. It definitely improves care, allows us to detect complications early and it is also the cost effective. So what are the limitations in Indian healthcare system? We know that there is less manpower, there are regulatory issues, inadequate infrastructure, communication gap between the doctors and the patient, and there is implications of using POCT devices in India. We know that low turnaround time, personalized diagnostic, early detection and proper planning of the treatment, but these things should be remembered when we are using a POCT device in our clinical practice. They should be affordable, sensitive, specific, user-friendly, rapid and robust, equipment free and delivered to the needy. So with this, I would like to thank you. And uh, I will request all of you who are interested in technology, do visit Technology Pavilion at 4 p.m. at level one at Elliot 3. Thank you. Thank you very much.